Yeah, it's your boy Chili here. Welcome back to Chill. In the last video, we started work on our Windows subsystem. We create our window class, and that seems to be all working. But uh, the way we did it, not the greatest. We're not checking any of these error codes, and that is not how we are going to do business. So we need the ability to check the error codes. I'd like to translate them into human readable text when we report them. So we're going to add that functionality. And if we have time, I want to knock out a bunch of utilities that we're going to need when we create the actual window, because the, the actual window creation code is going to be quite interesting. And I want to focus on that. So we want to knock out all the other stuff ahead of time so we can just focus on the windows. All right, so we had this header code pair here, utilities, and we want a little function that takes in an H result and spits out a string for us. So not not too difficult. And uh, here it is. Uh, so it's format message W. It does a lot of things. So it takes in a bunch of flags to basically tell it what to do, which is kind of an ugly interface paradigm, but there you have it. And uglier is that it has a parameter here it takes it says that it takes in a pointer to a string but it actually takes in a pointer to a pointer to a string if you supply a different option here so you have to you know basically do type punning with this function in order to, to get it to work properly very nasty interface but there you have it and what it's going to do is it is going to allocate on the windows side some memory to uh, put this string into, which is separate, by the way, from you know the memory allocation of the CRT, the C runtime. So what that means is that you have to use a special function to deallocate that memory when you're done with it. So yeah, we're telling it to allocate its own memory. We're telling it to format the each result message, translate it into text, and we're telling it to ignore inserts because you uh, from the name of the function, you probably guess it, it can also do formatting. So you, it works like a printf. Basically, it does. It does all sorts of things. It's a, just a it's just a hodgepodge. But anyways, so yeah, language stuff here. We just use the defaults. The return is how many characters are in the message. How long is it? So if that is zero, then, you know, let's do a little warning that uh, we couldn't format that bad boy. If it's not zero, we're going to copy that into an actual W string. We're going to free the memory. Also report if that failed for some reason. And the, the, the descriptions tend to come with um, new lines in them, which kind of messes up my logging. So I just say, hey, if it ends with this sequence, just just take those boys off there because we don't want them. No new lines. Thank you very much. We're also going to define a custom exception in the win namespace just to keep things separate so that you can filter on that if you need to. Now let's get down to it in window class.cpp. Include exception, utilities, and logging. So for this register la class here, we're going to check ah, what's going on here. So we get the atom, but then we're going to check to see if that was zero, because if it's zero, that means we had a problem. And so we want to report that problem and then throw an exception. Now, here's the thing. Uh, I'd like to have a little a little sauce on chill log to make it easier to report uh, Windows errors because we're going to they're going to be very common. So in entry .h, let's add an optional unsigned int that will hold the H result. I don't want to put H result in here because then I have to include Windows and I'd like to pollute the code base as little as possible with the Windows header. Uh, now, in entry builder.h, let's add a couple of nice helpers. So we made a function HR and a function HR that takes in an unsigned int. In the CPP file, we include chillwin.h. Here, let's add our sauce. It's very simple. For the one that takes in an HR, we assign that to the H result. And the one that doesn't take in an HR, we call get last error to get that and assign that. And that's why we had to include chillwin in here. So now that we have this, this window class error stuff actually works. And actually, now that I think about it, we don't even need to include utilities in here because the actual translation of the error is going to happen in the logging system. 
Now, similarly, uh, when we unregister class, let's instead check the actual return result of this. Most of these Windows functions, it's annoying, they don't actually return H results, they just return a bool. And so you check the bool, and then if some if it says, if it's zero, that means there was an error, and then you call get last error. So that's stupid. But anyways, so uh, for this one, we definitely don't want to throw an exception from a destructor. So we just print a warning. It's it's not a huge, like if we can't unregister a class, it's not the end of the world, but it is kind of funky, kind of jank, and we do want to report it. So there you have it. Now, in here, we're calling a bunch of Windows functions. So let's, you know, check their return codes in some meaningful way. I'll just include assert here, and maybe we'll use some asserts along the way. One nice assert to check. Chill chk. We're going to just make sure that we get a non null p wind in here. Now, these functions are some real bullshit. <laughs> this is why I freaking hate APIs that are using. Well, this is one of the reasons. There's many reasons why I hate APIs that gotta use like return numbers for error codes. It's just jank bullshit. So they're using the return value to return some useful information, not just errors. And what that means, it's overloaded. So if the function fails, the return value is zero, but that's also a valid value for the previous value of the offset. So you, just by looking at the return value, you can't tell if an error actually happened. So what the hell do you do? And what you'd have to do is you actually have to set last error to zero and then you check, then you do the call. And then if the call is zero, it might be an error. So then you call get last error. And because you set it to zero, if it's not zero, that means that an error happened. Is that some bullshit or what? No words. I have no words. So here's that bullshit in code form. You make sure that last error is zero before you do the call. And then you check get last error again to see if it changed. We could also, you know, check, get the return value from this as an extra check. And then only if this return value is zero do we call get last error. But I don't care. I'm just gonna call get last error and make the code slightly less ugly. Not a big deal either way. And then once that's done, we forward message and everyone is happy. Um, here, get window long pointer. I'll put, a, I'll put a chill ass in here. I'll make this one a chill check because it's only ever called once, so we might as well do it in production as well. This one is called for every single message, so a very small optimization probably doesn't mean anything, but we'll just remove it from release. And that should be all the error checking, but we've got one little uh, loose end to tie up here, and that is we've added this data to the entry, but we're not actually using it anywhere. So let's go into the text formatter. And here's where we want to include our Windows utility. And it's very simple. It says if we have an H result, print out the value of the H result as a hex number, followed by, you know, its description. So let's see if I missed anything. Let's try to give this a build. All right, looks like we got some problem with the linker library here. Let's just do a clean solution. And that fixed it. Now we noticed that we got this warning here, and I've had that warning before. Um, it says it's dangling, right? But why doesn't it give a shit about any of these ones here? Only this one gets reported, and it's not dangling. I mean, we're just returning a pointer. We're returning a reference to self, which is a common paradigm. Uh, so this is, in my mind, a false positive, and I'm just, I'm just tired of looking at it because I've seen it before. At the same time, I don't want to dis disable it globally because it is a useful piece of, you know, static analysis when it's not broken. So we're just going to disable it for this file here because this is the one that keeps causing me problems. Finishing up with a pragma warning pop down here, although I don't think it matters at this point. It's the end of the translation unit. But anyways, so we'll disable that and that should shut up the static analysis from its false positive. I just comment out a little bit of this assertion code so it doesn't crash the program. Yeah, we get this error printed out here, which is from here, and nothing else happened. Yeah, we get the assertion failed, but no other errors. Now let's see if we can try to make this thing fail. So we have to give it a string for the Windows class. Uh, I can't inject a null pointer in here, it has to be a valid string, but what if an empty string? I think that might, the uh, Windows library might not enjoy that. Yeah, okay, so it definitely does not enjoy getting an empty string. Uh, so now we can look at our output and we can see that we have an error. 
the H result is cannot create a file when that file already exists. So it's it's a it's a it's a strange H result since we're not creating a file, we're actually creating a Windows class, but it's just they reuse the codes. So it's basically just any named object we tried to create it, but this one already exists. So apparently, uh, maybe. Windows a window class name of just an empty string is valid, but it's also being used by something else, maybe by something internal to Windows. So fair enough, and then we get this exception, which could have been caught at a higher level if we desire to do so. And that's good. Shit seems to be working. Now I don't think we're gonna be able to knock out all those utilities that I need for making the window class. Uh, so that'll be the next video, but uh, I do want to add something to log while we're at it. So what we're gonna add here is these two fields, basically. Uh, they're both optional. And these ones are not data fields that go out into the text formatter and get printed. These are fields that control the behavior of how the entry is formatted. And basically, uh, I mentioned this before when we were creating the logs, but I also want to give the, uh, the user the programmer the ability when they are emitting a log to customize it with local overrides and that's what these are doing these flags are local overrides that you could set so you could override the behavior to not capture a trace even if your error level is set such that a trace would be captured by your policy uh, and you can also overload to you know suppress showing the source line if you want to do so and I want these for a different video I'm going to make uh, I would like to have these options so I'm going to put them in here right now so an entry builder here we are going to add some options here no trace and trace to set an override and oh, here okay so yeah I wanted to make this one underline just keep things consistent and then in CPP file so right here we're going to add our implementations and we're going to again fix this up here and finally it's not enough just to add those things into the entry you've got to actually refer to them somewhere have them do some work for you so in here now we want to control the output based on those overrides so here's how that changed this gets shorter because we've moved some of that out into here where the source line goes which is now controlled by an if um, I've also removed the end line at the end here I put the end lines at the beginnings because now you don't know which of these lines are gonna go in so you don't know where exactly you need an end line so end line only comes in when you add something so this is gonna allow me to customize whether I'm outputting line location information whether I'm doing a stack trace, which is good. Sometimes I want to output something to the log as an error, say, hey, this is an error, but I don't want to do a stack trace because it'll just clutter things up or it'll be a performance issue. So let's do an error trace with some overrides here. Should probably get rid of this error inducing thing. All right, good thing I checked because yeah, it uh, this suppressed the line location, but it still has a stack trace. So I missed something and I, I think yeah, that, that makes sense because I'm not doing anything here. So let's do capture trace. So this is the override. So we use the value of capture trace. But if that override has not been set, then we default to referring to the level of the, the log entry. And there you go. Look, ma, no trace. Beautiful. And the converse should also be true. We should be able to force like an info log level to, to print a stack trace. Of course, we have to have uh, our level such that we are actually, you know, reporting info. And yeah, here it is. And we got our stack trace. So this is all good. And I am going to be actually cloning now this repository and using it in a completely different video, which I think you guys are going to enjoy. A little secret for you. But uh, yeah, that's it for now. And in the next video, I am going to be doing just a bunch of like random utilities that we're going to want when we create the actual window. Until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you soon with some more chill.